Greetings, my fellow hunters, and welcome again to another review. And after a long string of action-packed anime of some of them with true conspiracies, others action, and others... I don't know. I thought it's time I took another step into a more relaxing anime. So hence why, this week, I'm we're going to be talking about... Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Bait, a little anime that I found very charming rewatching it, and I'm glad to review it. So as I always say, my fellow hunters... Let the hunt begin. So, what is the story of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid? Well, it simply begins with when Miss Kobayashi found a dragon when she was drunkenly wandering through the mountains and pulled out a sword from God out of Toru's back. And so, indebted to the woman, Toru is now serving Miss Kobayashi as a dragon maid. Now, it's a relatively simple plot. There isn't really a big overarching plot. It's just small mini plots in each episode of the character's day's to day life. So it tends to be a very chilling and relaxing situation. Nothing intense, but it does have a few highlight moments and interesting world building and character building, which is very fresh and nice pace from usual. And I do feel like it is kind of sweet at how the story is just about how how much Kobayashi's life has changed with Toru and the soon-to-be-adopted daughter, Kana, as she learns that Toru is basically what she needed, a way of having fun, as I'll get... I won't say anything until the characters, but she just feels like her world's better with Toru and Kana, the little dragon girl, but I'll get to her and my characters. It's all relatively simple, there's great characters, all memorable, and since it's a comedy, there are quite a few laughable moments. And even if the laughing doesn't help, there, the animation alone should carry it along, as it is quite beautiful. Bah, but as I said, what is an animation or story without the characters? Now, in a series like Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, there are multiple characters, but I will be focusing on the main three, which will be Toru, Kobayashi, and Kana. Those three characters are the main characters of the series, and I feel like are worth talking about, but I may introduce the other characters in a quick shot, so let's get going. So, first up, we will start with the most basic one, Miss Kobayashi. Now, Miss Kobayashi is an everyday person with no special qualities, except that she's an office lady who works a long shift with abusive superior and has good friends. Well, mainly one, before she met Toru, but before then she was also a bit of a maid otaku, so she had an obsession with maids. She liked maid-related things, she had books about maids, mangas about maids, heck, even in the, her house she has, like, posters of what maids should be about. She's, I would argue, the straight person, the every person, the person that the audience can latch onto in this world with magical, powerful dragons that could end society with a simple flick of the wrist. So I feel like she's just the person who, to keep things grounded. And she does it well, honestly. It's relatable. She's, she's relatable, basically. And you can feel for her sometimes. And when certain events happen later in the series, which I will not try to spoil... But when you see what happens when you take Toru out, you can see that she struggles to adapt because she's reliant on Toru in not in a bad way, as that she sees Toru as both someone to take care of as well as the caretaker of the house. Speaking of which, Toru is the maid of the house. As I said in my story, Toru was originally a dragon who had a sword impaled into her back until Miss Kobayashi yanked the damn thing out and freed her from death. So basically, now she's in service, not in the bad way, to Toru for saving her life. Toru is, I would say, the more ditzy character. Not in the sense that she's bad, in the sense that she's unaware of human society, and she's used to more dragon societies, as she did a few times threaten to kill a few people for just entering the house and misconstruing what Kobayashi said. For example, one episode when she said, hold down the fort, she didn't mean actually hold down the fort and... Eliminate anybody who enters, more like just keep the house safe from intruders. She tends to misunderstand human customs, but then again, you'd expect that from a dragon. But she's a really lovable character, and you can see she's a hard-working character. She's lovable, and you just love how she just succeeds in a lot of things. It just makes you happy. Especially with the little next character we're talking about. So the final character we're going to be talking about is Kana. She is basically the child of the group, and I'd say the adoptive 
daughter of Kobayashi and Toru, even though she's a dragon and probably a lot older than Kobayashi. She has a childlike personality and it's such a child curiosity that it makes her so adorable, and especially to a cold hunter like myself. She warms my heart up at how she just has personality to her and that she's just fun and she just wants to explore things like what a child would do. She wants to she actually has a lot of fun at school. She has a friend who, even though is a bit stuck up, is kind of likable at how she's just so gaga over Kana, as I'd imagine the audience is whenever they see this little dragon. And I wouldn't say, who, would, who wouldn't like her little design? It's so adorable. It's almost gushy about which I'm doing right now, but it's actually quite cute. And the fact that she's curious does help. So my final thoughts on the characters is that they are all pretty strong. Sure, there are one or two characters that are a bit off, but I overall say the cast is really strong, engaging, and you just love them because of their personalities. I haven't seen a single character that I dislike that much. Even the one that's Kana's friends can be a bit schnobby, but she's not overly schnobby, and she just has a good heart. I feel like she's actually a pretty good solid character, unlike other characters that are kind of like her who are snobby. I actually like her. So yes, I give the overall cast a good solid 6 if I was going to give it. As for animation, it is really, really good. I'd say excellent, well done for 2017. And I simply love it and how colorful and bright it is. The simplistic animation, sure, it's simple, but it actually does an excellent job of conveying emotions to the characters. And even though it's simple, it's so simple that certain highlights, it looks fantastic when the characters are actually fighting. I know what you're thinking. Why is there a fighting in an anime like Miss Kobayashi's Dragon made? Well, it's basically because they're dragons. Of course they're going to play fight. But when it does happen, the animation really jumps up in quality. Especially when Toru's dragon form or Kana's dragon form is introduced. Because it really shows the detail they put into the dragon forms. That it's almost impressive and baffling how big they are. That they can fly on tiny little wings. But that's a nitpick that I'm not going to go into because... Dragons and fantasy, but yeah, overall the animation is simply one of the best I've seen for a slice of life yeah, I'm gonna call it a slice of life that I've seen in a very long time And even though I'm not the biggest fan of them, I can appreciate the simplicity art style in it As for music It is simply wonderful to listen to Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid's music It's so upbeat at times that it just makes her put a smile on my face at how cheerful it is And it's not so overbearing like other shows It actually feels great at times when the characters do something well or the music plays or when the characters are in a depressing moment and it has a sad tone to it. It just, it just resonates so beautifully. It's actually one of the best times when music and animation sync up beautifully at times. It's wonderful to listen to. And heck, the opening, it's about communication, cooperation, and understanding. It's beautiful to listen to with its upbeat tone. It just puts a smile on anyone's face. The ending is also so calming and relaxing and how... It's somber to listen to. Maybe not somber, but it's just nice and relaxing to listen to after a hectic episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. It's so wonderful that I just gush about it all the time. So, my final thoughts on Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. It's a good anime. Especially after you've watched a lot of action-packed anime. It's nice to watch something like this to keep things calm and relaxing. A nice cool down. And unlike other anime, say Card Captor Sakura, which gave me an ice cream headache after watching it. I actually enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to the second season coming out next year. So, as I say, go watch it. What are you doing here? Keep Go. I've already said all I can. Go, 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 go. Watch it. Otherwise, you're just a boring, miserable guy that doesn't like it. So yeah, go watch it. <laughs> anyway, my fellow hunters, thank you so much for watching my review. As I always say, links below for my Twitter and Discord. Please follow me and them because it always appreciates and I love to talk to my people. And as I always say, my hunters, let the good blood guide your way.